Hello. So today I'm going to uh, go through a very quick piece on Photoshop just to show that uh, sometimes, as I've uh, said in some um, in some comments before, that sometimes you don't have to have massively detailed pieces. Sometimes uh, something just a, you know one thing and needs to be added to a piece um, for it to work and show how things can just two things can come together and completely change everything. So this piece, this idea that I'm going to do came about from uh, looking for something else, um, well, helping my son with some homework, and he had to list about some things that he liked, and uh, one of them was Lego. So uh, while I was, and he had to put images in. So I uh, was uh, going around and I found a Lego block and I thought, this is a good. Uh, this is a good image in itself. This block here, there's a lot of potential, and for some reason the idea popped into my head of the whole uh, Greek god of Atlas holding uh, holding the the. It's, it's supposed to be the skies above his shoulder, but uh, um, a lot of the a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, portrayals of him, and I this probably could actually be right. I can't remember my Greek mythology very well. Of him holding the world on his shoulders, uh, the globe, hence where an atlas book of an atlas comes from. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun to have, uh, for me to have a um, the Lego block being held on the shoulders of Atlas. So I ran around looking for some pictures of some uh, some statues of Atlas, and um, that and um, some of them found pretty good. But then I remembered I'd actually done a piece some years ago, which was called Artistic Burden, using a statue of Atlas holding up a a uh, snow globe of a ballerina. So I thought I would use this as the template for what we're going to be doing. What I'm going to be doing today. So this is the the actual image. So what I'm going to do, and I also partly chose this because it's got a stark white background, so it makes things much easier to work with, and so uh, much quicker and easier. So as you can see there, I did this in 2016. So I'm going to get rid of my signature, my 2016 signature. That's the first thing I'll do. Because for some other things I'm going to be doing, there's going to be a bit of cheating, and um, not much actual cutting out. So. One of the things I'm going to do to help with this, because I'm going to try and make this with a transparent background, so then I can um, I could then later do versions of different coloured contrasted backgrounds. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate the layer, the background copy, and then I will hide the original background layer. So now, anything I cut from here, so I have here the, I have the, this tool here, I can't remember what it's called, I use it so often, it's like a ma magic wand tool, that's it. So I've highlighted the what's around it, and delete it, and you have a clear background. Now, what I'm going to do with this one, is to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of the globe, so there's going to be some cutting involved. So what I like to use, I like to use this one here, the polygonal lasso. Or lasso. So I just find this a bit easier to just chip away. Some people like to do some other um, use some other tools, but I'm pretty stuck on this one. And it's good to I find I like to zoom in, so you see the pixels, and then. I generally cut across them or through them. Make sure that I have got it okay. I mean, it takes a long time, a lot longer to do this way. But really, for this one, all I need to do is cut away the bits where around the edges of the image, and you'll see why in a bit later.
so I'm getting rid of this so all then I will see is the white background the white part of the image left get rid of that some more bits to cut out because I'm going to be using the magic wand tool in a minute Actually, the only detailed cutting that I need to do now, because from here on, I can just cut across here to get rid of the glow. Bye bye to that. And then again, I'm going to use the this is all white background, the magic wand tool. Now, with the magic wand tool, you have to be careful sometimes where it doesn't cut across nicely. So there might be some tidying up that needs to be done, but this time it seems to have done it pretty well. Partly, be I think, partly because it's such a stark contrast. Sometimes where the cut, where you're cutting away from, but it's a similar enough colour to what the background is. The man using the magic wand tool it might actually then cut into the actual image. But here it hasn't. So I have this here now and I should cut out. And what I will do, I will save what I've done as I go, but I don't want to do it in um 2016 folder. So I shall just do a here you go, there's a, a work in progress I had from the capitalism one where I made it green. So I'll just call it Atlas. That's why, that way, but I'll keep it still open as a Photoshop file where, the, where you can have the open layers. The reason why I'm doing this is so that basically if something goes wrong, I haven't lost the work that I've done. So now I've got the Lego brick and I will put that to the side of it so I can, what I can do is I can cut and paste it, I can move it over. So again, Lego brick, I will it's a magic wand tool, but if I do if I try and move over now, it will just move over the white bit. So I need to actually change it. So it's just it's actually selected the Lego brick. So if I control shift and I, that's just the Lego brick moved over, uh, selected even. If I move this over. Right now, as you can see, the size isn't the best. So what I would do, and it's it's over the layer of uh, the atlas so actually so what i need to do is i'm going to move it backwards and now what i can do is i can shorten it a bit make it a bit smaller this is one of the benefits of doing it with uh, doing these things digitally is the fact that you can now you can resize as much as I love doing things hand cut, as great as that is, you can resize things doing it digitally. So we'll see how well this might work. If <coughs> now I'm going to need to let me see if I can see my own positions. Now I originally thought I might have to put the corner over his shoulder, but again, I don't think that. In a sense, will work. So let's zoom in and see if I can make this work. So I will select it again. Now I think that works a bit better now because you do have the impression of it being over his shoulder. And with it being green, I chose a green block um, to go with the statue for the reason of it all has the same contrast now. Uh, all the same colour, so not in stark contrast against each other. But what I want to do, see if I can make it a bit closer to what he's what his statue is. But I don't think that's going to happen. But still, this looks this looks. This looks quite well. It's a shame I couldn't find one where the block was facing the other way where you'd see under it. Um, but I could just couldn't find some one angle that way. But I think this work it still works well and gets the point. 
so if there is a point so now I will put my digital signature on it so that it's mine To do this, I'm pressing Control and T. I like to use keyboard shortcuts as much as I can, just it's quicker. It's possibly a bit lazy, but what can you do? As I say, work smarter, not harder. So. There is a school of thought where some people say calling people like the people who call other people lazy are just the people who never thought of uh, an easier way of doing things. So I'll get rid of this now. And here we go. Now, what we can do with that is I shall also. Get rid of some of this space at the top, so I'll shorten the piece. And that is now almost a bit more like it's in like an A4 type ratio, which makes things good and easier for things like printing. And if I was uh, at this to make for posters, then I would. Um, which this one quite well could, or postcards, the way this has gone, I could then um, um, <clears throat> I could then um, I didn't want to have to I wouldn't have to do much in the way of uh, I wouldn't have to do much in the way of cropping I wouldn't have to really lose much, if any at all so now I'm going to send it, save it to a PNG so it's uh it's there's yeah, so the layers won't be open anymore but we won't need them to be so so think what to call it um so we could call it the weight of creativity it's kind of almost similar in a in a sense to artistic burden but I could I could quite likely change this title in the future, but right now this is something I just want to call it. I need to call it something. So now while it's saving, these PNGs can take a little while to save. What we will do is then we can then now that you've got it here like that. So I'll get rid of all that. And I will open up the PNG. I reckon this won't be for naught. As you can see, I've made quite a few digitally this year. Because all these ones here are, are put in a digital. There's none so far, but where I've um, scanned them in, and all, um, most of my work this year has been digital. So here we have here, it with uh, this is it. So right again, what I would do is I would duplicate the layer again. And I would then create a layer, which I would then put underneath. And say, why don't I just create a layer and put it underneath the uh, layer zero? That doesn't sometimes work that way. So what I can do now is I can, if I wanted to have different coloured back, play with having different coloured backgrounds, because some artists like to do that. Uh, I could see what they look like. So, see, does that blue background work? Is it uh, stark enough? I don't know. So let's have a look. Create another layer. And then see, does it work with a pink background? Maybe not. I don't know. Someone might like that. There is a bit of Daglo terrorism going on there. So then, of course, let's see what it would look like with an orange background. Orange or yellow, maybe that's not quite the right shade of orange. Let's see. Just something like that. Some would say it looks pretty good. Let's see. 
So we're talking about opposite colours. We'll be talking about opposite colours here now. See what a red one looks like. Some people might like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this as a Photoshop file. So then later on, if I wanted to do kind of some posters of it or postcards, then I could just select each which one and um, see how that goes. So uh, I hope you like this. Hope you found this. Um, it's gave you any ideas or showing you some of the things you could do or some of the crazy at least, at the very least i've shown you some of the crazy things that i like to do so and uh again as always like share and subscribe and um go to my link tree which is in the which is, will be in the description you will find um links to merch and my merch stores and my socials and i hope to hear from you soon thank you